Hello, everyone. My name is Iris. I'm a software engineer from Intel. Today, I will together with Steve to deliver this topic to you. Hello, Steve. Hi, Iris and everyone. This is Steve, a cloud software engineer from Intel. I am very glad to address this presentation with Iris here. Thank you. Okay, let's first take a look at our today's agenda. We will first introduce some background information about our topic. Mm, then we will tell you uh, what the multi-tenant challenges will, uh, will be for service mesh. Mm, then we will go through several options that you can use to, to achieve multi-tenant in service mesh. Then we will go further to tell you how you can safeguard multi-tenant in service mesh with Intel SGX. At last, we will do a demo about one of our solutions uh, and do a, a quick summary about all the solutions we have um, shared in this talk. So first, let's take a look at the background information. So as you all know, edge computing is very important now, especially in 5G uh, area. It provides functions like 5G slicing, packet processing for cloud native functions and applications. Uh, so in the edge computing scenarios, the resource is very constrained. So there will be multi-users uh, running in the edge so we need to provide a way to make sure the resource is isolated between the multi-tenant. Uh, also, um, service mesh is acting as an infrastructure layer in edge and cloud. So you can offload all the traffic management, security, and telemetry tasks into the sidecar. There will be also uh, there will be a central control plan that will manage all the configuration information for the sidecars. So we need to take care of multi-tenant in service mesh to support the edge and cloud scenarios. So after uh, we want to, if we want to support multi-tenant in service mesh, what the challenges in the, we need to address? So we uh, firstly it's operational isolation. So you need to make sure uh, the service which belongs to one tenant doesn't influence other tenants. Uh, the other is config isolation. For example, if you make a traffic management rule, you need to make sure it doesn't influence applications running under the other tenant. Uh, the other part is traffic isolation. It means uh, you need to make sure traffic targeted to one tenant will reach the tenant uh, correctly and it doesn't reach the non-related tenant's applications. Uh, the other part is identity isolation. So uh, if there are multiple users coming in the uh, service mesh applications, we need a clear way to identify um, between these tenants to make sure the correct request has been handled by the correct tenant's application. Uh, the other part is, uh, you know, there are multiple telemetry data in the uh, in the service mesh. So how to make sure all this data can be isolated between tenant is also a problem or challenge. So if we want to mount support multi-tenant in service mesh, the straightforward way you can think out is to make sure every tenant has his own mesh and own cluster. So in this way, all the isolation will be uh, achieved natively because they are running in different clusters. Um, but as we mentioned before, in the edge computing scenarios, resource is very limited. So it's always impossible to make every tenant has his own mesh or own cluster. So we went further to think about, can we support multi-tenant in single cluster, but in multiple mesh? So this is the picture that for this solution. So you can see there are two tenants, tenant one and tenant two. Both of them have had their own mesh, but they are running in the same cluster, cluster one. So um, in, because uh, each uh, every mesh has their own root CA, so it means the traffic between them will be isolated. Also, 
uh, in Istio, there is a discovery selector that you can utilize to achieve service discovery isolation for multi-mesh in the single cluster. So you can see in the left part, when you install Istio, you can specify which namespace you are interested to watch. Uh, to, to make the Istio D watch. So the, the left side is an example that um, the Istio D will only watch namespace, which, which has the label environment equals IT. The right part uh, is, a, a, is a sample that for the accounting department. Um, it's this, uh, but um, but one thing we need to mention here is uh, actually in Istio upstream multi mesh in single cluster isn't uh, that isn't supported because um, in the in every namespace Istio D will create a root, uh, root uh, create a secret to host the root third for all the all the all the tenants in the in, in the in all the mesh so. Then we actually, to support this solution, we actually have a, a patched solution to respect the revision in your uh, service mesh installation. Um, so if you are interested, you can uh, find the link about the patched solution at the end of the presentation. But this um, uh, this solution, uh, if you want to use this solution, it also has some upgrade uh, issue. Um, so in the future, if you want to upgrade your Istio in a new newer version, it will have some problem. So we think it further to see can we support multi-tenant in single cluster, single mesh. So uh, we need to solve the challenges we mentioned previously one by one. The first one is service discovery isolation. So in Istio, it provides a custom resource sidecar. So you can use it to achieve the service discovery isolation. In the left side, uh, you can see um, there is a sidecar custom resource. It, it will allow applications running under namespace one to access applications running under namespace one, namespace two, and Istio systems. For all other namespace, it cannot access. So the, the right side is, for example, uh, in your mesh, in, even there are in your mesh, uh, when there are multi-tenant, um, there might be some global service that you want all your tenants workloads to, to access. For example, some logging service. So in this case, you can define a global accessible uh, service here. You can see in the egress host part, uh, it is defined as star slash star. So it makes, uh, makes it a global service. Then for the config isolation part, you can utilize the export to field in virtual service, destination rule, and service entry. So using this way, you can achieve config isolation. And then the last, the, the, the next part about the traffic isolation, it still has a, a custom resource which is called authorization policy. So the best practice here you, uh, is to first deny all the traffic between the mesh. Um, so then you can gradually uh, allow the communications between the namespaces. So you can see here example, uh, it allows um, applications running from namespace one to allow to access applications running under namespace four. So this is a picture to demonstrate uh, all the, all the uh, options we just mentioned. So in this picture, you can see there is only one mesh. There are, there are two tenants, tenant one, who has who owned the namespace team one and the tenant two who owns the namespace team two uh, between the uh, the between the two mesh between the two namespaces communication is broken um, via the authorization policy. Also, uh, it provides uh, config and the service discovery isolation through export two and the sidecar. But this solution has some obvious disadvantage. So first, um, because you you want you need to using authorization policy to to enable the traffic isolation, it will add additional airbag filters to your envoy sidecar. Uh, the other part is, um, for example, if you have new tenants who want to onboard to your service mesh, or you want to deploy new workloads for your uh, tenants, then the authorization policy might need to be changed to consume all these new workloads. 
Um, the third part is that there are there is no identity isolation. So, for example, if there are multiple user requests coming in, there is not a batch, uh, uh, not a good way to uh, distinguish them from the different tenants workloads. Um, the last part is um, actually um, the all applications running in the mesh. Even they are belong to different tenant, they are sharing the same root search. So this is almost uh, unacceptable for most tenants because they don't want their uh, their root search to be mixed with other tenant. Um, so to solve the problem, the first one, the identity isolation, uh, we have this solution. Uh, it's called Auth Service Configurator. It's a um, Intel project, uh, but I put the in GitHub link here. So if uh, you are interested, you can uh, click here to take a look. So um, the basic idea for this project is um, uh, because starting from Istio 1.9, uh, Istio support external authorization. And there is a project called Auth Service. It's a Istio ecosystem project. So using this, this two combination, you can define uh, different OAuth providers for different service according to different service URL or parameter. So this also opens doors for us to support multi-tenant. So in our project, to support more tenant better, we have defined a custom resource which is called Chen. The in the Chen CR, different tenant ID, a different tenant admin can define their own Chen CRs. Then the, there is a chain web hook. It will do some validation to make sure the chain CR is valid. Then after that, there is a auth service controller. It will monitor all these uh, chain CRs and will combine them together to up and update the chain information into the config map, which will be picked by the auth service dynamically. So using this way, we can support multi-tenant dynamically as well. Then how to solve the problem that uh, every tenant has the root, same root CA. So I will hand over to Steve to take you through the journey. Hi, Steve. Thanks, Aris. And uh, I will go on with option three about the multi-tenant in single mesh and single clusters. And at first, I will describe the image in the slide. There is one cluster with single mesh and multi-tenant. Tenant one with service A and tenant two D with with uh, tenant two two with service D. And all these services are under the control of S2. And in the middle of the image, there, there is the Kubernetes API server. In the right side of the image, there lists some signer solutions for certificates of tenants. The first choice is signer operator which means that you can develop develop your own uh, operators to doing the to do the signing work and the second choice is about the cert manager which is an open source pro project and it has a complementary ecosystem and you you just need to use it and the third choice is that you whatever you can think about it but all these these signer solutions need to be watching the Kubernetes CSR all the time. So for the next time, next step, I will give more details in about the, this signing process. The first one is that the service of the tenant will send the is 2 CSR to is 2 D, and is 2 D has the uh, uh, registry authority server short name for RA server. An RA server will do some will take some actions including validate is to CSR from the from the service and then retrieve the some information from the is to CSR and then organize all necessary information to form a Kubernetes CSR. The necessary information will include such as a service name from the service and some involved variable such as search signer domain info which in, which is configured 
in the configurations when installing the issue. And I will give them more details later. And the solution then will cite to will cite the Kubernetes CSR when there is when there is a uh, Kubernetes CSR. And the S2D will be notified and update the Kubernetes CSR once the Kubernetes CSR has been signed. How oh, okay? After all of these steps, the certificates certificates of the tenants have been already now. Therefore, S2D will can dispatch this certificate to specify the site service sidecar. So that's all for the entire process. And you can see that there's no there is some uh, advantages such as different receipt for tenants can be supported and no additional field to add it and no additional config changes if new work nodes added. However, uh, in this slide, you can see that there are some clusters and one tenant, such as, for example, tenant A, uh, tenant one or tenant two, each of them have the multi clusters and multi, multi meshes. However, all of this service in one tenant can be communicated with each other because all of them have been signed by the same signers, which created by the signer operations. And this is an extension and, and, uh, so, uh, and in this situation, it can benefit from our solutions. OK, for the next slide, uh, the, I will introduce about self-guard multi-tenants in service mesh. And as we as we know now, there are some uh, multi tenants and some service meshes. So there there are some many additional private 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 keys for each tenant service service. So how to manage this private key service? It I think it's not not popular properly. It's on properly to store them in the configuration files or some config map and secrets like that. So we import the Intel software guard extensions, SGX. SGX is a system of architectures enhancements defined to help protect application integrity and conf conf confidentiality of data and to withstand certain software and hardware attack, attacks. And it can uh, have, have the following items for protecting your data. The first is protects against software attacks. Even if OS drivers, BIOS, and hypervisors are compromised. A second item is secrets. Secrets remains uh, protected even when attacker has full control of the, all the platform. And the set item is prevents attacks like memory bus slooping, memory tamping, tempering, uh, and code boot attacks against the memory contents in our RAM. The, the fourth item is provides hardware based as testation capabilities to measure and verify valid code and data signatures. So in our in, in our in our solutions, multi CA SGX will provide a trusted computing enclave where data and applications are protected independent of the operating system or hardware configuration itself. And every tenant will provide its own provide key in the enclaves. And enclaves will provide some handlers to user to get this uh, rarity key. And as, that, as, as, as you know, SGX enclaves will help provide more security transfer between processes in an OS. 
so there 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 are some very security escalate escalations between the confidential data and the the consumed data client okay it's a uh, i think this the next one, one more time if if you want to if you want to know more details you can click the you can see the more details from the intel homepage and the next time and the next step i will do some demo shows for us at first let, let's make things either that means one one tenant with one namespace and each name each tenant has two services http bing service and sleep service and i will share i will share my screen for this demo Yeah, as you as you can see, before we, we, I will run the demo demo script. Before we do something, we need to have one clusters. The class in this in our scenarios, there are one master node and one node. As you can see, it's ready now. And then we we need to make sure that our signer operation uh, solutions are is working well. In our in our scenario, we use a set manager as our signer solution. Then we need to at first we need to create the self-signed class issuer of set manager. It's a concept of a set manager. And there there are for the na uh, namespace bar foo and issue system. Bar foo and bar and foo is our user, user namespace and user and tenant space. And then we need to install uh, Istio. Before we inst before we install uh, install Istio, let, let's uh, go through the configuration file for the Istio. There are two sections for this for this. The first is the environment. As I have mentioned, there is the environment variable search designer domain, and we set the set uh, class issuers set managers as the at the venue that means we they, it will it will use the set manager as the designer and a external ca and in the second second section is about the uh, overlays we need to update the istio d cluster cluster role istio system we need to give more privileges for the set manager to sign to sign the CSR, Kubernetes CSR. Okay, let's install the institute. Installation is done. And now let's deploy in the workloads. As we have mentioned, every, every namespace had one tenant and with two service services, HTTP bin service and sleep service. And the same same things in full namespace. OK, everything is done now. OK, now let's very verify the network connectivity between uh, inside every namespace. First in in bar, as you can see. We will call we will, we will Call the HTTP bin service, HTTP bin service in bars from the sleep bar. We get a response from the HTTP bin bar service, and it's it's available. It's the same things from in in the full namespace full. We also got got get the response from the HTTP bin full. Now. We also support the, uh, we also support the another ways to do such network connectivity is a verified verification. It's a is to CTL. And you can use this command. You can use this command. To do such verification is to CTL proxy config root C compile and the, the ports 
and namespace and two ports and with the, their namespace. And the result is that both of these services is available with each other. This is the inside in the inside of the one namespace. Another is about the uh, across the namespace. You can say we check the network connectivities from snip dot bar to the HTTP bin full dot full, and the, the result is the connection error error. And the same thing, this the same error when we do when we from slip dot full to HTTP bin dot bar. And let's see also see the issue CTL result. Okay, they they are unavailable. So that's all the that's all the very file inside one namespace and across the namespace. And we also we also do a summaries for this all of these solutions. And in all these solutions, we have some uh, comparisons between them. And the first, but the the more important is that I also I want to highlight is that the third one, assuring the slides. In the second options, single mesh, single cluster via multi C multi C external, also and SGX. We have mentioned there are different routes be, be, besides the different root C for tenants. No additional field added, no additional config changes if new or nodes added. We also provide identity isolation by the external auth, 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 auth authorization. And another is the SGX to make sure the more secure. It. But the the cons is that there is additional customer CA needed. So I think that's all for our today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. bye.